Women for America First want a mural too. In a letter to New York Mayor Bill de Blasio, the Virginia-based nonprofit executive director requested that it be allowed to paint their motto. And this is it, engaging, inspiring, and empowering women to make a difference. Now, they'd like to paint it on Fifth Avenue as well, or near Gracie Mansion where the mayor lives, or any number of alternative locations they're open for. For more on the upcoming mural, we'll bring in the writer of that letter, Kylie Jane Kramer, executive director of Women for America First. Uh, Kylie, good to see you. Thanks so much for coming on. Tell me about where you are uh, today in regards to that request for a mural in New York. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, um, I submitted the letter last week to Mayor de Blasio. I am a New York City resident, and um, you know, not only do we have supporters for Women for America First here in New York, but all across the country. And we believe that our voices need to be heard, just like any other American citizen, that they have their freedom of speech. So we submitted the letter last week. Um, we gave them three days to hear back from them. So I guess that would mean the end of today, um, but we're going to give them a little bit of grace and see, you know, when we're going to hear back from um, the mayor's office and our request to paint. So far, we've heard nothing. So far, you've have you've heard nothing. Okay. Um, however, That's the confirmation that they've received it. You know that they've got it. Okay. So yes. what I read to our viewers, that's what's going to be painted, right? That's what you want painted, right? Yes, it's our motto, just like the Black Lives Matter organization's motto as well. Okay. Um, tell me about what happens next. If you if you do if you don't hear back or you do hear back and he says no, okay, what do you do then? Well, you know, we have already um, retained legal counsel regarding this issue, and we will be suing um, if it comes to that. We hope it doesn't. We hope that he does the right thing as um, mayor, but. We will be suing him. Um, we're a protected class under the 14th Amendment, just as any other American citizen. And, you know, this is this is the problem. He opened up it for anybody. I don't care if it's the NFL, Black Lives Matter, whatever organization, to paint a message using taxpayer dollars um, on the New York City streets. And this is unprecedented in it and should not be allowed. The government should not be in the business of picking winners and losers. And so that's what we're really, we deserve our voices to be heard. And listen, this year more than ever, because we're coming up in August on the 100th year of women's suffrage. So, I mean, we really deserve our voice to be heard. And the government should not be telling us that we can't have a voice just because it's not what they believe politically. You know, he's the mayor of all New Yorkers, not just the Democrats. Right. It's not an empire. These are elected officials should be acting on the, exactly. uh, yeah, uh, uh, for the citizens. Um, it sounds like you have a strong argument there. It's not simply, hey, I want to paint something on the street. You're backing it up with facts. Exactly. And you know what? Facts matter. You can, and he didn't just try and make this you know, a little street mural like they want to paint it. He made a very political message when he was there painting it with them and painted it in front of Trump Tower saying that this is a message to President Trump. So we deserve our voice to be heard, and that's what we're going to be fighting for. Um, hopefully he's going to do the right thing. You know, I can be a little optimistic, um, but living in New York with what's going on right now and the shootings over the weekend and just the uptick in crime, and we have our mayor defunding the police by a billion dollars and then you know, going and spending money, taxpayer money to paint a mural. It's just absurd to me. And I think that not only New Yorkers agree, but Americans agree. We just showed the viewers um, what that would look like, how you envision the mural um, with the slogan. It's a little longer than Black Lives Matter. You got a few more words in there, um, but that's yes. that's perfectly fine. We were showing it again there. Engaging, inspiring, and empowering women to make a difference. Do you want it in yellow? Do you have a color? Do you care? Um, well, we have requested to have the exact same thing that Black Lives Matter um, organization requested and received um, just to make it easy. You know, we're going to be amicable to whatever. And we've asked also um, for Fifth Avenue as well. But if he, you know, the mayor is not um, willing to grant us that, we've requested also maybe in Times Square in front of Gracie Mansion or in City Hall Park. We've given another of other options um, that we're really trying to meet him more than halfway. We are also will be funding this ourselves, not asking for taxpayer dollars to do it. So I think that, um, you know, we've really given him an opportunity to really let him make the stand that it's not just a political message that every American and every New Yorker has the right to be able to do this. Yeah, I would I would actually double down on that and say no Fifth Avenue is where it's going to go because that's where that would win. Um, anything else wouldn't well, be. Well, that's our, our first 
my friends. Yeah, very good. Kylie, come back on the show and tell me how this works out, okay? We appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. That's Kylie Jane Kramer. Good to see you. All right, I'll bring in the panel now. Governor Scott Walker and Heidi Collins, uh, welcome back. How about that? Um, what what a clapback, if you will. She's coming hard from the women's point of view, from a factual point of view, and she wants exactly what you know the organization of Black Lives Matter. Now she wants it for for women as well. Heidi, weigh in on that for me. Well, I just love it. I couldn't commend her and the organization more, and I wish there were more of them, because what happens here, and I would be really interested to hear the governor's take too, Sean, is, um, you know, when you open up this this tunnel, if you will, or this door, if you will, to uh, streets, which are funded by the city and by the state, for everyone to use to become bulletin boards, then you better be careful because they have to be available and accessible to everyone. This is the same type of organization, nonprofit organization, has a message, has an agenda. And um, you heard her also say, Kylie say that she's also a New York City resident. So I think it's gonna be a really tough one for him to to say no to. I'm very, very interested to see if they get a response today. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I, listening to, to what she said, that that's gonna be hard to, to tell. I, I'd love to just hear the response because Governor Walker, that would be a never ending conversation if they say no. If you're just speculating, you're gonna say, there's no way Mayor Bill de Blasio is gonna do it. Um, maybe he does. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, this is the problem the Pandora's box you open up. And uh, not only is it the taxpayers, but I think the reality is why did they paint it there? They painted it there because Bill de Blasio is doing what liberal mayors are doing all across America, and that is ignoring their own problems, ignoring the fact that they control the city, they control the budget, they control the police departments, and yet they're somehow trying to blame our president, Donald Trump. This wasn't an accident. The reason they put it there was to try and ignore the reality. If you really want to make a statement, I would I take it a step further. I think New York City residents should ask to be able to draw the chalk lines of all the people who've been killed this year, all the homicides, including those this weekend, mm -hmm. and point out that that doesn't, you know, painting the street doesn't ignore the reality that New York, Chicago, Atlanta, all these cities that have liberal mayors and liberal city councils aren't doing their job. And no matter how many times you paint the street, that's not going to cover up the fact that real people are dying because they're not willing to take action. Yeah, or we could just leave the streets alone because we need to be able to drive properly through them. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's, yeah, that's the whole exactly. other thing about it. Uh, Governor, uh, open the doors, if you will, of, of governing for a second here for us to understand how does a request like that make it to the mayor's desk? He, he's the mayor of almost 9 million people, 9 million citizens in this area. How, how does that request make it to his desk and how serious um, do, does his uh, administration, if you will, take it? Well, normally when I was governor or even account executive before that, you thought long and hard about anything you did because you had to understand you had to have consistency. Unfortunately, those on the left, like de Blasio and others, they don't care about consistency. Many in the media largely ignore that. And, and yet if a conservative did the same thing or something similar, uh, they'd be all over him. So my guess is, unfortunately, he's going to ignore this. And most of the press in New York is going to give them a pass. Yeah, maybe no response. Um, I got to go. I, we'll, we'll be back, though. Uh, Heidi, Governor, stick around. Uh, there's more to come on National Report coming up just a bit. This, the debate.